Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, I am Esther and I am delighted to come back to you today on behalf of Anne-Charlotte. We come together around an amazing project, an example of emblematic rehabilitation showing the capacity of reuse of the industrial patrimony. Sponsored by La Région Occitanie, the project of La Cité consists of the renovation of the historic site of Les Halles Latécoer in order to create a third place dedicated to collaborative and sustainable innovation. La Cité hosts several public and private services devoted to young startups such as Adoc, At Home, Nubo, and Rose Lab. The project is located in the southeast of Toulouse, in the suburb of Montaudran, next to the railway running along the protected historic runway of the Aéropostale. The building itself is registered as heritage of the aeronautical industrial history of Toulouse. Built between 1917 and 1918 by the industrial pioneer Pierre-Georges Latécoer, Les Halles Latécoer witnessed the origin of the industrialization of the aeronautic sector in Toulouse. Since World War I, the factory has been located on the northern side of this 45 hectares aeronautic site, spread along the railway connecting Toulouse to Set. The runway and maintenance buildings were located on the south side. The three halls of Les Halles Latécoère housed the first aeronautic production in Toulouse. Originally built for the railway industry, they quickly shifted to aeronautic purposes. The site was used to produce military aircraft and, after the First War, commercial and aeropostal planes. Despite its fame, the Aéropostale was facing financial difficulties until it was bought by Air France in 1933. The Aéropostale line was thus maintained up to World War II. In 1940, the site of Montaudran was sold by Pierre-Georges Latécoère, who was associated with the plane maker Louis Breguet since 1939. The building and a portion of the production were destroyed by Allied bombing on April 6, 1944, leaving only the structure. Louis Breguet rebuilt and expanded the site so as to produce bomber aircraft till the 70s. The perimeter of our intervention included the three historic halls of the Latéco Air Factory, along with several warehouses and canopies, plus a disused area at the eastern side. The site nears 20,000 square meters. In spite of the destruction of 1944 and the remodeling in subsequent years, the site is generally well preserved and still presents remarkable features, such as the three main halls which have been designated as an historic monument since July 1997. Given their composition and imposing volumes, they constitute a monumental ensemble. There are also several other listed elements, the passenger's lounge building, the runway in its current layout, called the Château Petit Espinet Renal, also classified for its façade, roof and left wing. At a wider scale, the site is located in an area undergoing development. The direct environment of the site is constituted of residential areas and logistic and industrial activities. At its southern border, it reaches the University and Scientific Complex of Rangueil, gathering more than 35,000 students and teachers. The project of La Cité is concentrated mostly inside of Les Halles Latécoère and is composed of the three historic halls, which are 120 meters long and 26 meters wide. Since La Région Occitanie bought the southeast neighboring plot, the access points to La Cité have been doubled. The access on the northeast facade is maintained and a new access is created on the southeast facade. La Cité is composed of co-working spaces, meeting rooms, a 20-seats conference room, a restaurant, a fab lab and a large space for events. 
Due to the sector dynamism and the needs for additional activities to consolidate this new infrastructure, we suggested a global vision of La Cité encompassing the whole site. Just like the innovative structures that it shelters, La Cité has to anticipate the future evolutions of its surrounding spaces so as to lead its development. In this regard, the project required the renovation of the historic halls shale. The three production halls were gradually transformed after their original construction in 1917 with the renovation laid by Louis Breguet after the bombardment, the transformation into warehouses for Air France, and subsequently the conversion into a factory for UTL from 1960 to 1990. Our project took into account all these successive changes in order to offer continuity with its past evolutions. The longest state of transformation was in its second form, lasting from 1945 to 1953. As the current state still bears signs of that era, the current renovation refers principally to that era. Also, with the idea of revealing the history of the building, the project also refers to its original state, 1917, while complying with the needs of today's program. The transformations are mostly focused on the roofs, framework and covering, the facades and interior features, brick pillars and rolling bridges. The metal awnings and contiguous warehouses have been demolished to open up the historic facades and offer new openings towards the buildings. The docks have been preserved and converted into an open terrace. The project aims to highlight the existing building, showcasing the whole structure with new additions built as light structures from the floor up and with as little contact as possible with the existing construction. Roof Renovation According to the research conducted by Pierre-Yves Caillot, the historic monument lead architect, we discovered that the two lateral holes historically presented a curved roof structure. Originally, the roof followed the shape of the framework, built in concrete. In opposition to the two lateral holes, the roof of the central hole was subject to little modification through time. Thus, our intervention preserves the shape of the current roofs while adapting them to the new project. We limited the modification of the roofs to the addition of skylights to provide regular and diffuse daylight appropriate to the new internal functions. This implied the renovation of the metal framework with ad hoc reinforcements and replacement of missing or damaged elements. The preservation of the continuous skylights running along the roof reach. However, the existing layout of the roof has been modified to better suit the new internal program whilst drawing inspiration from its previous historic designs. The project needed the complete removal and renewal of the roof ties in order to renovate the pattern, add a thin layer of insulation and replace the damaged ties. We kept the skylights of the roof ridge for zenithal daylight and we enlarged and covered with mechanical ties two openings on the far ends of the roof in order to align them with the glass walls of the facade. This refers to a disposition already used on the southwest facade from 1917 to 1944. After discussions with the original curator of historic monuments, we decided to preserve the current volumes of the roofs which made us develop our own wooden prototype shape to fill irregular spaces between elements of the framework. In addition, acoustic insulation was added between the batten and the ties with a 5 cm spacing with a lower batten for both technical and aesthetic reasons. The alternation between the batterns is visible on the underside of the roof as it had been in the past. Facades concept According to the archive photographs of Léa Leticoère, the main facades were depicted as ornamental facades with a triple arched opening for each nave. After the partial destruction of the building during the war, this unique feature that created a strong identity was replaced and thus forgotten. Thanks to diligent research, several meetings with the regional department of culture and many debates about the authenticity of the facades, we decided to pay a tribute to their original design, expressing them in a contemporary fashion. Indeed, we opted for a modern reinterpretation instead of a mere reproduction. Thus, the new transversal facades are designed as light facades with the use of vertical twisted metal blades which reproduce the impression of the former arches depending on the perspective. The southwest facade running along the rail track displays the same pattern although the blades are horizontally oriented to work as sunshades. 
The concrete awning pillars sheltering the former loading dock are straight bare to magnify the structure. Concerning the lateral facade design, it alternates openings and pillars and reiterates the use of vertical blades to mark every entry. This allows a direct and natural lighting of the southwest offices while conserving the alternating rhythm on the facade. Above the main entrance, the blades are horizontally oriented to generate a monumental access awning. Interior layout the project develops a design grid of wooden beams and pillars based on the grid of the existing building. This grid of 5 by 5 meters is filled by either fully glazed panels, panels including a glazed section above a wooden apron wall, or fully wooden panels. All thermal and acoustic insulation is fully integrated into these panels composing a completely flexible and modular system. The slide construction system on two floor levels is designed to accommodate the most common use in the program, office space. The floor plan allows to create open spaces of about 40 desk stations. The recreational areas are located in between two plateaus and are organized around technical blocks integrating the kitchen blocks, toilets, copy areas and technical installations, keeping the office plateaus largely open and calm, free of any annex surfaces and equipment. On the upper level, a food bridge connects all the modules around the large central space. Interior restoration the brick pillars were stripped down to reveal and magnify their variations in color, but also to allow the masonry to breathe naturally. A recessed joint also detaches them visually from the floor and avoids water infiltration by capillarity. The concrete pillars are repaired and the industrial rolling beams are preserved. The rolling beam in the central nave is locked in place and the rolling beam of the third nave is moved and repositioned in the central nave as well. Program of the ground floor. The ecosystem square. This space is a public square, partly mineral and partly planted to create a cool green environment, a place of free expression and interaction equipped with benches. The space is at the heart of the system, welcoming, uniting and connecting users. The heart of the ecosystem. At the center are located the services, meeting rooms, catering and connection to other areas. This is the first space the visitor encounters and as such represents the system. It's a place of encounters with the conference room as the crown jewel. Modular in terms of use, its comfort and flexibility contribute to the quality of the whole project. Event space. This space, promoting the région Occitanie, reflects the activity and dynamism of the Cité and can host various events, exhibitions, conferences, hackathons. The occupation of the space is by definition flexible and its bare design reflects the aesthetic of the halls. Program of the upper floor. Co-working. The office and shared spaces are designed to be modular and flexible. They are punctuated by informal working areas, phone booths, rest and recreational areas thoughtfully located close to the working spaces. These recreational areas can also become areas for creative interventions by artists hosted on the site. Co-making. The creative workshops dedicated to physical or numeric design are open to the public. The large ceiling height allows for the creation and exhibition of large-scale prototypes. Materials and colors. Thanks to the project, the original materials of the Halle Latécoère are rediscovered and magnified. The brick pillars that had been painted white are stripped down to the bare brick. Thus, at the fit of the pillars, two initial paint colors were rediscovered, a khaki green and a yellow, used in the aeronautic industry to designate left and right. Briand and Berthereau used this code to design the identity of the signature system of the project. The concrete structure supporting the industrial rolling beams is magnified again by high pressure sending down the beams and pillars to expose the concrete. The new wooden structures create a contrast and thus accentuate the materials of the industrial architecture of the 20th century whilst developing a low-carbon footprint, symbol of the environmental preoccupations of the 21st century. 
Thank you, dear listeners, and see you soon with our next Kamdashi in English. Bye bye! Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Kamdashi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon, and until then, take care of yourself.